Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fusion tutorial. In today's video, we are gonna combine two of my hobbies. We are gonna make a box joint jig that you can put on a table saw sled. And in this video, I'm really just gonna show you how to design it in Fusion and then how to install it on your sled. So let's get started. So it's a fairly easy project, shouldn't take that long, but we are gonna use some parameters. So if you have never used parameters before, you can click this little FX button or you can go to modify and change parameters. And we're gonna add a few here. We're just gonna type in width. And once you type in your name, you have to type in the expression. So we'll just do, oh, let's do maybe like 40. So it's like an inch and a half about. We'll hit okay. And then let's do length and we'll do 100 millimeters. We'll do thickness, and we're just gonna do two millimeters. Oh, what else we can do? Kerf width, which will be, a kerf is the, what, the, the thickness of a, a table saw blade, basically. Basically, after you cut something, what space did you take out of that piece of wood or the dado that's left? That's called a kerf. So that's that's basically the size of your finger joint on your box joint. So let's just do this at 12.7. So we'll do about a half inch. Hit OK. We can do other things. Oh, let's just do, we'll make this pretty parametric. Let's do chamfer. We'll just do two. And we'll do tab Height. This will all make sense here in a second. And let's do 10 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so that should be all we need. We can always add more later. So let's just hit okay. And let's create a sketch. So we're gonna create a sketch on this bottom plane. I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. We're gonna click here and let's start typing in our parameters. So you can see the 40 millimeters is highlighted in blue. So I'm just gonna start typing in width hit enter. Then I'm gonna hit tab on the keyboard to go to the next measurement. And I'm gonna start typing in length and hit enter and then hit enter again to finalize it. And so there is our first plate, I guess you'd call it. So we need another plate. So we need a second one over here. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle and we're just going to, I'm gonna kind of click this off center. I'm not gonna to try to get it perfectly lined up so, so I can show you how to do some uh, constraints. So. We can just click this and instead of doing, typing in these dimensions, we're gonna use constraints. So we're gonna use the equal. So we're gonna have this line always equal this line. This line will always equal this line. And then we want this to line up with this. So we're gonna go up to collinear. So this will always line up with this. And you can see we're still not fully constrained because we, we don't know how th this space here, and this is gonna be the kerf spacing. So I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard, click on this line and this line, and I'm just gonna start typing in kerf width. There you go. And now you can see everything turns black, which means it's completely constrained. And we need to make the little tab now. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle and make a rectangle. And we need to dimension this as well from here to here. That will also be the kerf width. And this will be the kerf width. Now you could get a little bit more complicated with this and you could add in some clearances in, in case your box joints are a little tight or a little loose, but we're not gonna do that today. So that's all we need to do. Okay, so let's start making this into a solid body. I'm gonna hold shift and click all of these print profiles, hit E for extrude, and I wanna extrude this downward just because I want this sketch to stay on top. So I'm gonna type in negative thickness and hit enter. Now the sketch disappeared. It usually does that after you make a solid body. So you just come back up here and turn it back on. And now we can make this tab. We can hit E for extrude. And what do we name this? Tab height. So there's tab height, hit enter. Now we can turn that sketch off. And now we can make the chamfer here. This chamfer just lets that wood dado or groove slide onto this tab a little easier. And we'll just type in chamfer, 
enter. And that's pretty much it. Um, really easy project. Now, there's a few other things I might do. I It won't really matter for the function of this. I may round these corners because when you 3D print these, these sharp edges have a tendency to peel up. They might not with such a small area like this, but it's always good to add a little round over on your sharp corners. Hit OK. And again, you could, you could make a parameter for this if you wanted as well. So, OK. So let's jump into our parameters here and start changing some things. So how you would use this is basically you would set up your dado blade on your table saw and you would make a pass on a piece of scrap wood. And then you would get your calipers out and measure the dado width or that kerf width. And that's when you would type this in. So let's say you had a, you cut your dado and it was something like it was, it wasn't quite 12.7 millimeters, which is a half an inch. Maybe it was more like right at, maybe it was like 11.9. Oops, not 111.9. 11.9. Now this will update. And maybe you're going through three quarter inch, three quarter inch one by material. So your thickness or your tab height, you'd want this maybe to be a little taller, like 15. That just securely locks in those fingers a little bit more. You wouldn't have to do that. But anyway, you can see, you can change all of this stuff. Uh, thickness doesn't really matter. You probably don't want this super thick. It just needs to be thick enough to where you can tape it down. And you could go ahead and add some other little chamfers around these edges over. You don't really want to chamfer this edge right here. Let me get out of this. You don't really want to chamfer these edges because when we set this up on the table saw sled, you really want to line, you basically want to line this edge up with the kerf mark on your table saw sled. And this side doesn't need to be as placed accurately. This is just so you have the same height on both sides. But okay, that's pretty much it. Super short video today. Actually, I tell you what, let's do a little bonus since this is such a short video. Let's say you wanted to add some screw holes here, but what if someone, what if someone came in and made this too small? But what if someone came in and made the width only like five, which I don't know why they would do that, but let's say they did. All of a sudden your screw holes would not work anymore, right? Because this wouldn't be wide enough for it. So your, your model would kind of break. So let's just bring this back to 40. What we can do is a min max function or a minimum function. And you have to think about these a little backwards. So we're gonna we're gonna type in, we're gonna type in width and we're gonna type in limit. And the expression is gonna be max. So and I'm just gonna hit enter and it sets it up for us. And so what this is saying is for this parameter, it's, you're, we're going to type in two numbers here and it's always going to pick the larger number. So let's say the least we want to be able to make this width is 12 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 12 semicolon. And then the other number is going to be width, which is the user parameter. So if you think about this, Someone types in 10 for width. Well, this parameter right here is going to use this expression max, and it's gonna basically compare 12 to 10, which is now the width, and whichever one is larger, it's gonna pick that. So it's gonna pick 12, which means it will, it'll, it'll only, it can't, can't get smaller than 12. I hope that makes sense. And if you wanna put an upper limit on something, you have to use the min, M-I-N function, which then picks the smaller of the two numbers. So we'll hit okay. Now, this doesn't do anything yet. What's really confusing about doing something like this is now we have to go back and change the parameter of this width. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we wanna go back into that sketch. And instead of this one being width, it's gonna be width limit and hit enter. So let's finish sketch. I think that's the only time we used width. So you really have to, if you're gonna have like a complicated project or a complicated model, you really have to think about this ahead of time because let's say you use this width parameter in like five or six different spots. And then later on decided you wanted to put a limit on it. Well, you're gonna have to go back on your timeline and find all the places you use that width a parameter and change it to width limit. So 
Now, how you'd want to set this up for other users is you would do favorites because you don't want anyone messing with this width limit. That's kind of a behind the scenes parameter. So what you can do is just star the ones you want them to change. So under favorites, then you could just minimize this or you could click up here and only show favorites. So now when they put in the width here, so let's say we type in, I'm gonna just type in 20 and you should see it change. So it goes down to 20, but remember the lower limit is 12. So let me put in five here and I'm just gonna hit okay. And now if we measure this by holding shift and clicking on these edges right here, minimum distance is 12. And so it will, this cannot go any lower than 12 now. And you could do the same, and you could do this for any parameter you want. And what you may want to do if you are sharing this with other people is put something in the comments like here is minimum value equals 12 millimeters. So now they know if they do put in something like five, it can't go lower than 12. So let's just put this back up to 40. So again, let's go back to the screw hole thing. And I'm not gonna, I just did a video on the correct way to do screw, the correct way, the way I like doing screw holes. Like, but let's just make a few holes here. Let's just put a hole here, like a screw hole. We don't need it that big. Let's make this maybe like five, which should fit kind of like a drywall screw. And let's reference this edge. So we're always gonna reference this edge, we'll say at six, and we'll reference this edge at six, hit okay. And then let's do another one, another hole here. And we're gonna reference this at six and this at six and hit okay. So now these are always, these two holes are always gonna be six and six. Now, now if you think about this, you're gonna want this plate thicker, right? And you want, you're gonna want this to be a countersink because this needs to be flat. Otherwise your piece of wood is gonna run into this hole. But this is just for to show you why we put that limit on the width. Okay, so now if we come down here and let's say we made this five millimeters, well, now that it can't go less than 12, remember, so now it puts those screw holes right in the middle and we know those screw holes or those will always will always work. And you can do the same thing for like the length. Let's say, let's say you didn't want the, well, I'll tell you what, let's just do it. Let's just go, length limit. Sorry, you guys are getting a lot of extras today. And again, we want to set a minimum distance. So I'm going to do a max function and we're going to type in length, which is the user parameter, or we could do curf width times three. Let's, let's th think about this for a second. So right here, that's the curve width. This is the curve width. And we always wanna have room over here. Now, I guess what I should do, if we're gonna keep these screw holes in here, we have six millimeters and six millimeters from here. Gosh, maybe we should make this like 20 millimeters. So what we could do instead of doing times three, we can do times two, plus 20, plus 20 millimeters. So the the minimum length is kerf width times two, which would be this and this, and then another 20 millimeters here. So let's hit okay and test this. So let's go back to our sketch. Remember we have to change it in our sketch. This will now be length limit, hit enter, finish sketch. And let's go up back to our functions and let's just type in like 10, which is clearly gonna be way too small. And there you go. Let's see, let's, let me bring this back up. This is bothering me that this is so skinny for some reason. <laughs> My OCD, hit okay. Okay, let's see if we have 20 millimeters here. There you go, 20 millimeters. So now we know that these screw holes will always work. Um, and they can't go any, they can't make this too small. Now you could do a different, you could do a different length and width for this one. You just have to name it differently. I just have these set equally. You could do a, you could do a limit for the, 
oh, I don't know, the height. There's lots of things you can do, but this kind of shows you how to get started. M max and min functions are, are incredibly powerful for a fusion model, especially if you're giving it to, to other people to use and you don't want them to break the model. I'm gonna do a minimum value. I guess I don't even know because that changes based on the curve width. So I won't even type that up there. Okay, now I'm just rambling on. There is your model. I will show a quick video after this on how I put it on my little table saw sled and we'll end the video. See you next time.